YouTube folks out there, Facebook friends, people of Black Junction TV. My name is Otomir, and this is the Hard Black Truth. And the face that you see on the right hand is the same guy that you see walking away from the police. They have guns trained on him. And whatever happened beforehand, he was pissed off enough to where it didn't matter how many weapons were pointed at him. He was going to get into his vehicle and drive off. And I know that there are a lot of raccoons out there and there are a lot of white supremacist sympathizers out there who are trying to say, well, he should have listened. Or my favorite line is play stupid games, win stupid prizes. And, and you know, there is a little bit of truth in that nugget there in the sense that we are in a race war and we do know that police are ready and willing to kill your black ass. So if you value your life, if you value living, you're not going to do as this man did. But then again, I don't know what happened beforehand. They said they attempted to tase him. Uh, you could see from other videos, not this one that you just saw, but there were other videos where there was like maybe two or three seconds captured beforehand. It looked like they had just got done wrestling and they could not bring him to the ground. That's how he, he was able to walk around to the drive side of the vehicle and attempt to get in. Uh, whatever those two officers had attempted to do, they were ineffective. And because they were ineffective, I guess the last resort for them was to pull out their guns. And when it was clear that he was going to ignore that, well, they just couldn't have that. We can't just have this man, uh, uh, you know, blow us off like that and, 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 and get in his vehicle and drive the hell off. No, we got to kill him dead. And that's what they attempted to do. Guys, this was an attempted execution. This was an attempted murder. This was an attempted lynching. There's no mistakes about it. Let's not play games around this. And for all you coons and coonettes and, and, and would-be white supremacist sympathizers and suspect white supremacists yourselves that are sitting here trying to make up excuses as to why this man deserved to be shot, to hell with all of you. Okay? There is nothing that you can tell me that this man did to cause this to happen to himself. Now, granted, again, we are at war. If you value your life, perhaps you would move a different kind of way. And again, to reiterate, we don't know what happened because the stories are, and this story is going across the board, that he was actually one of the good Samaritans to break up a fight. How do you go from breaking up a fight to all of a sudden police are questioning you, they're tasing you, and then they're shooting you? How does that happen? And I'll tell you why it happened. And I believe, personally, if they had body cams to show, but they don't, 2020, and they still don't have body cams. Obama's been long out of office, and these folks out there in Kenosha, Wisconsin, don't have any body cams. How convenient. Similar story with the Breonna Taylor case. No body cams. So we fought long and hard to get folks to wear these body cams only for these police uh, uh, unions and institutions and apartments to decide that they're going to take their time with the body cams or come out with laws that say, yeah, we'll wear them, but we don't have to record or it's at the police discretion. And then even when they do record something, you got to have a goddamn act of Congress just to be able to see the daggone video evidence. Like, it's crazy all of the things that they've done. They'll turn around and create new departments within the department that are so uh, 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 covert and secret that we just can't allow them to wear body cameras. They are doing everything to circumvent responsibility, but they want us to sit here and take a step back and wait till all the facts come out. There's nothing else that needs to come out. Unless those officers can sit here and tell us with a straight face 
and some cooperating uh, uh, cooperating witness testimony that Mr. Blake said he was going to go in his vehicle to get his weapon to shoot them dead, there's no reason for them to do what they did at all. Point blank, period. Throw them in jail, throw away the key, and let, you know, Big Willie have at them. Yes, sir. And I said it just like that. Those, this man had children in his back seat. You don't see them because the windows are pretty tinted. Um, but they're in the back seat, probably screaming and yelling. And you mean to tell me you gunned that man down in front of his own children like that? You could blame Officer Betty Shelby because when she killed Terrence Crutcher for under under similar situ, uh, excuse me, under a similar set of circumstances, she was able to not only get away with it, but she essentially got a promotion out of it. We are living in the twilight zone when it comes to black folks. Yes, yes, twilight zone. Not only, not only was she not arrested, she was actually promoted to instructor over gun safety. Blame Betty Shelby for this. Blame Officer Yanez, as he murdered Philando Castile out there in Minnesota in front of his significant other and child in the back seat. You are sitting there gunning down innocent men and women. You're doing it in public. You're doing it in front of children. And then you expect for them to grow up and say, hey, gee, I want to be just like that officer over there. I want to be a cop. Hell to the no. Hell to the no. At this point, if you are a black person and you decide to enlist to become law enforcement, all I could do is say, hey, more power to you, bruh. Hey, but you know what? You know what I'm saying? I'm still black. You know what? Hey, more power to you, bruh. More power to you. Okay? I get it. I get Yeah, yeah. Okay, more power to you. Because you know the institution that you've decided to enlist in. You know the set of people whom you call partners or battle buddy, whatever y'all call each other, you know the actions that they take on a regular basis. You know how many excuses you make in your head to defy the logic that is white supremacy. You know what the hell's going on. And oftentimes, you ain't speaking out about it because, well, we know what they do to police officers who speak out. I did an entire story on that. They'll mess around and get rid of you, take away your pension and everything. They'll, they'll, they'll make you go on a rampage. They'll rather you go on a rampage, kill a couple of them and, and so that they can kill you dead before they will acknowledge you as a black person on the force trying to stand up for your own black constituents. We can't have that. No, you're causing a disturbance all of a sudden. You're not in line with the department's values all of a sudden. So that's how things like this take place that you just saw. That's an atrocity. And to see that black woman jumping up and down in the middle of the street like that, that was heart wrenching. Now, I don't know where her position in the grand scheme of things were, but she had a natural reaction that anybody should have had when they saw that. Even a person that recorded, all they could say was, damn, damn, you just shot that man like that? You just slumped that man like that and he didn't present any real threat to you, but you just killed him like that. These officers have been allowed to get away with murder. This isn't even a term. This isn't even being hyperbolic. This isn't even exaggerating. They've been able to get with, get away with murder now for centuries. Understand centuries and decades that we've been telling you about this. Decades since the end of segregation and, and the implementation of our civil rights. They've still been able to kill us and murder us with impunity and get away with it. And all we have to rely on is, you know, let the investigation drag out. And then you will tell us, you know, five months later. After everything is settled, said and done, the dust settled and some other big news story come out and then you usher it in on the, oh yeah, and by the way, we're not going to charge up this officer. And that's what, we're, that's what we're left with? No, man. No, enough is enough. Enough is enough, man. That man was shot for no reason. That officer attempted to kill that man. It wasn't even as though, 
What, what, what can you really say? He attempted to kill that man. That officer, all officers, if both of them shot their weapons, they both need to be in prison for attempted murder. Period. You cannot act like that. And you don't need to have this qualified immunity that just, what the hell is a qualified immunity? Some asinine rule that says, you know what? Uh, if an officer kills somebody because they perceive the threat, we will just allow them at their word. Hell to the no. No one else gets that. Oh, but but we put these officers in these stressful situations. That's your problem, not mine. So if you put an officer in that position where they have a flight of fancy and decide, oh man, this guy's going to jump on a rainbow colored unicorn and come down with a bazooka, I better kill him now. No, your ass need to go to prison, period. Point blank. I don't want to hear about, I don't know what he was doing. You know what I don't know means? It means no. It means literally no. I don't know. If you don't know what he was reaching for, that means you don't know. You don't have a reason to assume that he was reaching for anything. Yet we allow these officers to make all of these foul ass assumptions and shoot people and attempt to kill them. Thank God again that this man isn't dead. Because honestly, when I saw that, I'm like, ain't no way he survived. He got shot at point blank range. He got shot at point blank range. And you mean to tell me there's black folks and white? Well, I, I could expect it from many of the white folks out there. Because there's enough of y'all out there that are just plain old races. But some of y'all black folks need to need to grab your balls or something. Stand the hell up, man. Stop playing these line of reason and trying to have these 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 thoughts in your mind that well I can understand what the police are gonna say. You know the police are gonna sit there and say it, no no we we beyond that we beyond recognizing what the police argument's gonna be. It don't matter what the police argument can be. What matters is that we're not accepting those arguments anymore. It is not. It's no longer acceptable for any officer to sit here and say I thought this was gonna happen. Did you see anything to really make you believe it? Did you see him pull out a weapon? Did you actually see him reach for a weapon? Did he actually tell you he was going to reach for a weapon? So how is it that this person that didn't say any of those things, who didn't actually show you a weapon, you at no point ever even saw a weapon, but you just assumed in your mind that he would have one and that he was going to turn around and use it on you so you had to preemptively strike no you could blame bush you could blame betty shelby you could blame Yanez. you could blame the united states of america because it is this great nation that has cultivated these ridiculous set of circumstances that allow officers who are supposed to uphold the law to turn around and continuously break the law when they murder us and then get away with it. And enough is enough. You guys let me know how you feel about this story. My name is Adamir. Holla at me. Peace.